Hello and welcome to another tutorial offering mathematical support to Umpa University students studying the module TM111 Introduction to Computing and Information Technology. Today we're going to be looking at file transfer, the movement of information across a network, the splitting up of that chunk of a file down to its fundamental components and then reassembling it at the other end of the transfer process. We've seen in earlier tutorials that the most fundamental component of computing is the bit, that little binary digit, that little switch that is either on or off. And it forms the most fundamental part of a computer file. Now, we transfer files all the time. We transfer them from a storage unit into the computer memory and from memory back into the storage unit again. Or we might transfer files across the internet. And this is all done by breaking up the file into its very fundamental components, the bit, and transferring the bits across the wire and then reassembling them all at the other end. So computer bits are transmitted down communication wires. Just like water in a hose pipe, my bits arrive one after each other. They arrive sequentially, one bit followed by the next bit. They don't spray out like this hose pipe is shown here, but they arrive in a little train. But of course, we are all connected to the internet at different rates, at different speeds. Our broadbands are all different depending upon where we live. So bits are sent down the wire. That means they're moving, they're traveling. Therefore, they have a speed, just like a car on a motorway. And its speed might be measured there in terms of kilometers per hour. But when I'm moving my bits down my wire, I measure it in number of bits that arrive per second. The abbreviation is BPS. Do you, know your, do you know what your broadband speed is? Mine is 20 megabits per second. Or, in scientific notation, I can represent this as 2.0 times 10 to the power of 7. Here are several broadband speeds. Uh, 20 megabits per second. What I want to do here is to convert them to bits per second and represent my answer in scientific notation. My first one, 20 megabits per second, 20 mega. 20 times a million, 10 to the power of 6. But then because I want it in scientific notation, I'll convert the 20 to 2.0 and then add 1 to the power of 10. We saw the how we do the conversion to scientific notation in a previous tutorial. 3 megabits per second, again 3 times 10 to the power of 6. But I always put the decimal point and followed by a decimal place. So 3.0 times 10 to the power of 6 turns 3 megabits per second into scientific notation. 256 kilobits, well a kilo, remember, is 10 to the power of 3, so this ends up being 2.56 times 10 to the power of 5. My very slow broadband speed here, 56 kilobits per second, that'll be the slowest of the lot at 5.6 times 10 to the power of 4 bits per second. So, we've seen in earlier tutorials that 8 bits can be grouped together and they form a byte. We can do a lot with a computer byte. We can represent a character, for instance. So a computer file will be made up of lots and lots of bits. And that means, obviously, we'll, it'll be made up of a large number of bytes. We measure transfer, file transfer, in terms of bits per second. But we measure the file storage, or the storage capacity of a file, we measure that in terms of its bytes. So do remember that, this distinction between bits and bytes and how we use them. If you look at various files on your computer, you will see that there are lots and lots of different sizes. Look at some text files. You'll see that they're actually quite small. Pictures and music files might be a little bit bigger, but the biggest ones of all will be video files. Also notice the file sizes that is quoted on your screens. File sizes are measured in kilobytes and megabytes. But the kilobyte and the megabyte has a different meaning in the computer world. The K and the M in the real world, we use a little K and the, and the M in the real world, and they actually have a different value. They have a slightly different meaning. In the real world, the deanery world we live in, we saw the kilo was a thousand. And the mega, we, we made that from multiplying a kilo by a kilo. Now, in the computing world, in the binary world, we're going to use values that are very near to these values. So we're going to use a value very near to a thousand. In the binary world, we saw when we looked at binary numbers that there's a number, 2 to the power of 10, whose value is 1024, which is obviously very near to our, our real-world kilo. So we use that in the digital world to represent a kilo. 
Hence, a mega, which is a kilo times a kilo, will have a new value. It will be 1024 times 1024. So file sizes uh, on our computer systems will be measured in kilobytes, represented by capital K, capital B, megabytes and gigabytes, represented by G and a capital B. Note the capital K and the capital Bs. The capital K reminds you you're in the digital world. The capital B reminds you we're talking about bytes, not bits. So here's a file sizes. And if we're going to move them across the internet, we move them in terms of the bits that transfer. So we always need to convert the file size into bits before we can think about transmitting it. So let's convert these to bits. I'll do it all in one go. Three megabits, that's going to be three times a mega, but we're in the digital world. So that's going to be 1024 times 1024. But that will give me the number of bytes. I must multiply this by eight. I must not forget the eight. And that will convert the, the bytes to the number of bits. And you can see there, my number of bits are large and very, very large numbers. So let's convert them to significant figures, uh, because very often we just want to convey meaning, not absolute value. So I've converted them here to three significant figures. But again, I don't like all those zeros. And so we get rid of those by thinking about representing our numbers in scientific notation. So here's the size of the files in scientific notation to three significant figures. Now, how long will it take to download these files over my 20 megabits per second broadband link? Well, think about our calculations for speed and distance traveled and all those sorts of things. OK, a broadband speed, you can, you can be thinking about bits traveling down a wire, a certain number of bits traveling down a wire in a certain period of time. So a broadband speed will be the total number of bits that have traveled divided by the time it took for them to arrive. In our mathematics, we might find a little diagram on the right there, a little triangle, a little aid memoir. So here I've got S for speed, T for time, and B represent the total number of bits. So my speed of my broadband, if you do a cover up, if you cover up the S, you'll see you get a B on the top and a T on the bottom. So the total number of bits divided by the time will give me my broadband speed. Conversely, if I want to know how long will a transfer take, it'll be the total number of bits divided by how fast it's going. If I do the cover up of the T, you see I get the number of bits on top divided by the speed. Thus, the time it will take to transfer a file will be the file size in bits divided by my broadband speed. That will give me the time it takes to travel. But just a word of warning, I did cover this earlier on in my other tutorials. When we do calculations, we never use any rounded number. We must go back to the original numbers we calculated. So we don't use the ones which were rounded to three significant figures. We've got to go back to the original calculations. And there they are. And you can see I'm doing my total bit size divided by my broadband speed. And that's giving me a time. So my three megabyte file will arrive in about 1.26 seconds. My 20 gigabyte file will take about 18 minutes. And my 256 kilobyte file will arrive in about a tenth of a second. Well, that's the end of this tutorial. And just to remind you that the uh, other tutorials and the support material for these tutorials are all available on my website. Thank you for listening.